Does the steering on your Ford tractor need some repair? Maybe your tractor is like this one, where when you turn the steering wheel, nothing happens to the front tires, or maybe the steering is just loose. Either way, you may want to do some repairs to the steering on your Ford tractor. Now, in this tutorial, I will show you how to replace the entire steering gearbox. You'll see when we take the tractor apart that the person who owned the tractor before us did try to make some repairs to the gear, but they ended up just being a temporary fix. Definitely the better route is to replace the entire gearbox at this point. So this video will walk you through step by step so that you can make that repair in your own tractor. Today I'm working on an 8N Ford tractor, so obviously if you have an 8N this will also apply. If you're working on a 2N or a 9N, these techniques will not apply. However, if you are working on a Jubilee, a NAA, a 600 or a 800, or even a 2000 or a 4000 with the early four cylinder gas engines, the techniques will overlap and you'll be able to follow along and apply those to your tractor. So to get started, we're going to remove the hood from the tractor. The very first thing you need to do is remove the ground battery cable from your tractor, which I've already done to prevent any accidental sparking. Then to remove the hood, uh, there's a gas line that's hooked up. You'll need to remove that. Also up front here with the air breather, you'll need to make that free so that the hood can slide over it. If your tractor has headlights, you'll want to disconnect those. Remove the radiator cap. There's uh, some bolts in the front. Of course, the grill needs to come out in order to free the dog legs. Then you can uh, loosen those bolts up in the front and the bolts here as well at the dash and then the hood will lift off the tractor. We'll need to remove some other components too. I've got my air inlet tube ready to come off and then my air breather has uh, two bolts holding it on. Take that off and then the air, there we go, the air breather will slip right down. I'm gonna slip around to the other side and remove uh, this battery tray that's hooked up to the dash as well. There's just one bolt on the side here that will come off and then We'll continue on to the dash. There's two linkages that you need to remove. This one for the throttle first, it's just that ball and socket. There you go. And then also there's one down here by your choke. There you go. And that will pull out through the dash. I'm removing my acorn nut from the steering wheel here. We've got it loose and it'll come the rest of the way. And then we'll take the steering wheel off of the tractor. I'm hoping that I'll be able to just uh, remove it here. It seems pretty loose. There we go, it'll pull off. Sometimes these are really tight on, like maybe they've never been removed from the tractor before. So if that's the case and you're struggling with getting your steering wheel off, you can use a gear puller or uh, sometimes you may have to cut it off completely and in that case you can just buy a replacement steering wheel. Now we're going to expose the steering gearbox by pulling this dash off. We already removed those bolts when we took the air breather and the battery cable off that loosened it up and you'll see that my wiring harness is loose enough that we could lift over that and we can uh, pull that right off and set it off to the side while we work on the steering gearbox. Now I want to show you the inside of the steering box. I have these four bolts removed so that this can pull off. If you elect to uh, replace your steering gearbox completely, then you wouldn't need to take that apart unless you're just curious and want to see the inside of the box. So I'll pull this out here so I can show you what's going on in here. Here you can see that the bearing is warped and worn. You can also see here that uh, there's been some repairs to the shaft. Also, there's repairs up here. I can feel with my finger where it's uh, warped and worn. Obviously, somebody tried to fix this, and when they fixed it, maybe they didn't get the uh, shaft completely straight or something like that that would cause the bearing to get worn and just not a correct and proper repair. Some people try to fix the steering gearboxes, and if you want to attempt that, you can certainly attempt that, but it's definitely easier and also definitely a better fix if you just replace the steering gearbox completely. You won't have issues later on down the road due to your repair if you just replace it. So that's what we're gonna do on this video. I'm gonna set this back in here for now, and then I want to show you uh, this to remove the arms. There's a nut on the end here, it's an inch and a quarter, and behind that is a lock washer. Then this will be really tight on here. You'll see that I'm gonna uh, use a pickle fork to try to get 
in between there. And then I'm going to hit it to try to loosen that up so that it will come off for us. You can see it's moving a little bit. Let's see if that was enough. There we go. Okay, and then your um, arm will just set down. You want to do that on both sides. Once you have that removed on the other side as well, then you can remove these four bolts down here and uh, take the whole gearbox off the tractor. You can see that I lifted my old steering box off and cleaned the surface. So now we're ready to set the new steering box on there. Just like that. And we'll use the same bolts from when we took it off to put it back on. At this point, we need to update other steering components besides just the steering gearbox. You'll notice that this steering gearbox is different than the one that we took off because this is one would be for a later model. It's okay, it'll fit onto an earlier model 8N as long as we update the other steering components. So I have my arm hooked up to my steering gearbox. I put the steering wheel on so that we could move this so that the teeth would match up and it would hold it on to the steering gearbox. So that's secure there. So so that then we can remove this tie rod end down here. So I'm going to just use a uh, pry bar to pull this up. Use caution when you do, of course, anytime you use a pry bar because you, if you uh, really hit it too hard, then this could come up flying at you. So you just wanna be careful. Also, there's a castle nut on the bottom, which I already have removed. You can see the castle nut here. That's on the bottom of this tie rod end. So remove that, and then you will be able to pry up and use a brass hammer, there you go, a brass hammer at the same time, and that will come right out. Then we'll take this off completely and replace it. You can see here that I have my arms hooked up. I wanna to talk to you about where I how I decided where to hook the arms up. So I twisted my steering wheel around and determined that the full twist was five turns. So therefore the middle of five turns would be two and a half turns. So that would be where the steering wheel should be for position for your arm to go onto the steering gearbox. There is a master tooth. Uh, there's four master teeth at four increments on your gear here and also it matches up for your arms. So you need to pay attention to that because that would mean that then your arms could go on pretty much in any direction of you know up side or side or down and they need to go down so when the steering wheel is at two and a half turns that's when we put the arm on and we did the same for the other side of the tractor too and again because my tractor is going straight forward right now both of the arms need to be in that downward position for your master key to match up so when you have your arms on you can tighten them up with the impact remember it's inch and a quarter these are the same same nuts that uh, we used originally when we took off. Okay, well, tighten that up there. Remember, we did have the lock washer behind it as well. Now we're ready to put our new drag links on. Now, because we are updating the steering gearbox, we also have to update the drag links on our tractor. When you purchase the drag link, it comes like this. Uh, you'll notice that the um, threads here are not pulled out comes like this for shipping. So I'm gonna set that down and then I'm gonna to talk to you about what we've done here. We wanted our drag link to be centered on each end. So we moved this tie rod end out eight turns on the front and eight turns on the back, like this, okay? So we turned it eight turns out both ways. Notice that this rubber needs to stay on here on both ends, okay? and then you can insert this onto the tractor. Now you can play with that and adjust it if, uh, differently if you need to for your tractor, but you want your toe to be correct. So I'm gonna set this here and talk to you about the toe. You know, it's my tractor for setting the steering up is like it's driving straight forward. And the toe for the front wheel is ever so slightly turned in. Not a ton, just a little tiny bit. You want it turned in so that it will drive straightly. You definitely don't want the toe to be facing out at all because that would make your steering, uh, make it hard for your tractor to steer. So make sure that your toe is set properly for your uh, drag link here. When that's all set up, then you can tighten it up with your uh, castle nut on that end and also up here. 
I'm tightening up the end of my drag link here. You'll want to do the same once you have your castle nuts on. This will hold your threads into place so that your toe holds correctly. You wanna make sure that these are in the downward orientation and then tighten them up. You have one here, one on the front of the tractor, and you'll also want to do the same on the other side of the tractor here where I'm standing. Now one word is that if you do not want to replace your whole entire drag link, you could simply just replace your tie rod ends. They come as a part like this. You can get them for both this end and the front of the tractor and that would just take out any play or wear that often does happen in these ends. So that's something to consider as well when you're making this repair. Now your steering gearbox does ship to you dry so you'll want to put some uh, lube in there. We recommend 90 weight gear lube. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We'll fill it up and then put the plug back in. I put a new rubber seal up here on my dash where the steering, uh, right here where it connects with the steering wheel. And now I'm ready to lift the dash on there. I'm just gonna be really careful because I got my wires still in, or my, yeah, my wires still intact. And this will slide right over there. Oh, we're caught on my rubber bushing here. Let's try that again. Oops, okay, there it goes and They'll rest there. I'm gonna, here's where my rubber bushing came off. So we'll stuff that back on there and then we'll tighten everything else back up. We're in the process of putting everything back on the tractor. You can see my air cleaners on as well as the inlet or the tube that goes to the carburetor. I have my battery tray with the battery back on. I don't have my uh, ground cable hooked up quite yet though. You can see that the dash is bolted down. I have my choke and my throttle hooked up. Now we're ready to put the hood on the tractor. I like to put the hood on and then the steering wheel. It's just one last thing to try to get around when you put the hood on. So we're gonna put the hood on, then we'll come back and have the steering wheel on. Our last step here is to put the steering wheel back on and then we'll start it up and drive it and show the steering working well. There we go. Our repair is now complete. We have our steering box completely installed. I'm gonna start the tractor up so that you can see how much of an improvement it is. Looks good, huge improvement over beforehand. Remember when the steering wheel did nothing? Huge, huge improvement.